Football. I'll show your daily fix of football chat here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Ronnie does a U-turn to appeal Boyata's red card against Hamilton Ackies. Uh, we'll also look back at all the weekend's fixtures in the SPFL and look ahead to the midweek ones as well. And uh, we are uh, celebrating Robert Snodgrass, fit and available for Scotland. Just a few of the topics we'll be discussing on tonight's programme. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say Dumbarton striker Christian Nadi is here with us as our boot room guest. I was, again, Ruffy, uh, going <coughs> to highlight all of Christian's clubs but we don't want to turn it into a four and a half hour show. It's, just, <laughs> it's as simple as that. How many do you think? How many in your career? Uh, 10 or 11 clubs. 10 or 11, yeah. which still, <clears throat> Chick Charnley still holds the record. 23 clubs for a professional footballer, Ruffy. Yeah, but he's only 31, so he's got uh, he's got a few clubs in him yet, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Christian, first and foremost, before we even talk about some of the headlines, what a result of the weekend. We didn't see it coming. Uh, did you guys believe that you could, um, first of all, defeat Hibs? And, and in such a manner, you were three goals up at one point. Well, I think the only people who could see it coming was us, the staff, the players, the fans. Uh, yeah, winning against Hibs is always a good win. Uh, get three points. Uh, leading 3-0 after, what, 60 minutes was just amazing. But uh, it wasn't just uh, the way we played, we were great, it's just the atmosphere in the, in the, in the stadium. Mm. What did the manager say to you prior to the game? Because obviously Hibs <coughs> had come off the back of the defeat to Morton, um, which I, again surprised many people. What did the manager say to you prior to the game? Well, Dumbarton beat uh, Ibs before, so we knew we could do it. We just needed to st stick to the plan, work together as a team. And if we had an opportunity just to put the, net, the ball in the net. Yeah. And, and do you consider yourself um, one of those players, even when you were a young boy, who was brave? Because it takes a brave man to go up and wave to the Hibs fans <laughs> after you've scored. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's brave or insane. I just... <laughs> I just wanted to give them back what they gave me during the game. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, I don't know about you, but that's my type of player. Um, yeah. if, you're, if you're getting pelters through the game, yeah. a little bit of banter. Not that the Hibs fans would have enjoyed it. No, no, but you, you have to wait for the strategic time. And, 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 and at 2 nothing. that seems a good enough time as any to go up and wave to them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and again, to be perfectly honest with you, Ruffy, uh, Dumbarton have killed off Hibs' chances of catching Rangers. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think there's enough games for, for Hibs now. Yeah, they, they did it before, but uh, I don't think there's enough teams. Our, our Rangers haven't uh, proven that they, they are going to lose that many games in the, the short space of time that's left. So, no, I think even the late goal that they had at the weekend was just the defining moment. Yeah, What do you think of the differences between the two teams? You will have played against both Christian Hibs and Rangers. Well, I would say Rangers are quite... It's a big team. It's a big club. Um... Defensively, I think, defensively, Rangers are stronger than Hibs, and that's what the difference is. You know that Rangers will always get chances to score, and with the strikers they've got, you know then they will score goals. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly mm -hmm. the point. I think it was exemplified <coughs> on uh, Saturday, Ruffy, when we were um, listening to a reporter on the game, you could sense that Rangers were pounding at St mm -hmm. Mirren, and they, were, they would go right to the end, and, and in the end... Yeah. Harry Forrester got the goal. Yeah, and it's not the first time in the last uh, three or four weeks that Rangers have done that. You know, they do create chances, you know, that sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. But uh, with the crowd behind them, uh, particularly at home, they push forward at every opportunity. And as Christian says, if you keep getting chances, you would think one eventually will hit the back of the net, and that's what's been happening. Yeah, yeah. let's have a look at the uh, table in the Championship. Um, at the top end of it, I think, uh, to be fairly honest with you, uh, Rangers may well look at that as an unassailable lead. Um, Christian, uh, from your point of view, five points between Dumbarton and Livingston, you have a game in hand. I would imagine Stevie Aitken is talking about up the way rather than looking uh, down the way. You know, I think the, the plan is to stay in championship next season. So we're going to take game after game. We've got a game against uh, Alua on Tuesday. And then if you win the game, we'll see what's after, what after that. But yeah, the main 
point is to win the next game. Yeah, out of all the clubs that you've mm. mentioned that you've played at, um, where has been your most enjoyable in your career? <laughs> I can make like some enemies tonight. Uh, well, <coughs> obviously I play in Premiership, in English Premiership, so that's something I can't forget. But my time at heart I was, was really good. It was difficult, of course, at some point. But I think that was uh, I enjoyed the most my football. In Dundee, I won the league, so obviously it's a really, really good, uh, good sensation, good feelings. But yeah, heart. I spent three years of my life there, so yeah. Yeah. Did you live in Edinburgh? Yeah. Makes it easier, Ruffy, mm -hmm. doesn't it? That's all I'm saying to you. Uh, if you live in the place as well, and I, I, although I must admit, um, from Edinburgh to now live in Ayrshire it must be a huge change in your mindset. <laughs> <laughs> There's no castles where you're living. <laughs> East Ayrshire. <laughs> <laughs> East Ayrshire. Oh, God. Absolutely brilliant. We'll speak more with Christian um, on uh, his career and, of course, his uh, aspirations and ambitions at Dumbarton. Um, now, uh, Ruffy, uh, one serious note um, with regards to the news element that we were talking about. Ronnie Dyla has <coughs> um, performed a U-turn. He's had a look at the Dedrick Boyata incident and he reckons it uh, it shouldn't have been a red card. Perfectly entitled to change his mind. I tend to agree with him. Yeah, I think once you've watched it two or three times uh, and again we must emphasise that uh, the referee didn't have the chance to watch it two or three That's times. Okay. He, he, was, he looked like the last man, it was a last man tackle. I thought at the time it was a good tackle. Uh, and But from where the referee was, he's got to make up a, a decision with the player going down and where it was. And unfortunately, I, I think he could have been a wee bit assisted, you know, before he made the decision. But yes, he, he's got every right to, to question it. And uh, it, by all accounts, it looks as if he might go off. Yeah, uh, and with regards to the Premiership, I'm, I'm going to get Christian's thoughts on the uh, Premiership uh, title race as well. It's great similarities between what's going on in the Championship as well, Ruffy. Aberdeen are running out of games. Mark Reynolds mm -hmm. still thinks they can catch Celtic, but... Uh, they are running out of games and they missed a big chance with that draw against St Johnson. Yeah, so it's all about believing that you can do it. I mean, six points uh, can be catchable. Obviously, with a game still coming up against each other, you know, if it had been 12 or 13 or whatever, you wouldn't have been able to buy into that. But the Aberdeen players have got to buy into it because they'll know that they're going to go to Parkhead and they've got a chance of winning that and anything can happen again in the split. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned, uh, Christian, you had uh, three enjoyable years at Hearts. Let's have a look at the table um, and see what you think. Uh, is it just uh, a bridge too far for Hearts to try and catch uh, Aberdeen? There's, um, there's nine points, the difference, despite the fact Hearts do have a game in hand. Well, mathematically, it's possible. In football, everything is possible. But we need to be realistic. I don't think Hearts will catch um, Aberdeen. But they still got a place in Europe for next season. And I think that's what they have to stay in their mind. Not get maybe not catch Aberdeen, but not get caught by the mm. team just behind them. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at the uh, results from the weekend in the Premiership. We already know that uh, Hamilton and Celtic had a share of the spoils as far as uh, the overall scores, though, Ruffy. We've highlighted Aberdeen, <coughs> draw with St Johnston. Um, Kane Hemmings has got 20. He th some of his teammates think he can get 30. I'm not going to bet you on that, Ruffy. Mm. Um, Hearts edged it uh, against Kilmarnock by that solitary uh, strike from Jamie Walker despite missing the penalty. Motherwell 3, Paddock Thistle 1. But the bottom one will please you, Ruffy, because mm -hmm. you still think Dundee United can escape the drop and there's certainly life in them. Yeah, there's a lot more life than what there was two or three weeks ago. Uh, and certainly winning games uh, can change things. Uh, they've got some important games coming up. Uh, but I still think it depends on teams just above them. You know, if they start picking up points, it's going to make it even harder. But again, I keep saying again, the split, you know, 15 points at the split. If they could get somebody within touching distance, possibly four or five points, anything can happen. Yeah. Um, have you changed your mind on who's going to be in the playoff? Because tomorrow could be crucial for Kilmarnock at home against Ross County. Yeah, well, that's what I'm just saying there. If Kilmarnock were to go and win that, you know, it then makes it even more difficult. But I do think there'll be one of these teams will go into a free fall uh, and not win as many games as what they'll be winning. Yeah. I have Hamilton for the playoff, uh, Christian. It won't please too many of your old teammates. Who do you think is going to be involved? I think Dundee United are relegated. What's your... What's your take on the bottom end of the Premiership? I don't think Dundee United will be relegated. I don't think so. They might be in the playoff, 
I don't think they will go straight down. Right. I don't think so. And who do you think is getting relegated? Oh. <laughs> I can see Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock. That's right, yeah. OK. Um, well, I'll tell you, uh, the words I'm thinking of in my head are, is Christian Nadi brave or insane? He's living in East Ayrshire <laughs> and he's just tipped Kilmarnock <laughs> to go down. Good luck with that, Christian. <laughs> we'll get the helpline for him and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and thankfully we don't need to put Christian Nadi in the witness protection scheme just yet. He's uh, tipped Kilmarnock for the drop, but uh, whether that uh, transpires or not, only time will tell. In fact, to be perfectly honest with you, Ruffy, I think we've changed mm -hmm. our mind on more than a few occasions at the bottom end of the Premiership. Yep, and we probably will uh, from now until the running. Uh, there isn't any of the teams down there shown any consistency at all, or Patrick Thistle a good result uh, last week, disappointing one on and, and, and Saturday there. Hamilton got a wee lifeline with a point against Celtic. But uh, and, until one or two of them start winning back-to-back -back games, and I think a lot of them will still be uh, under pressure. Yeah, Christian, we talked about the fact that if anybody can catch Rangers, now Falkirk believe they can catch Hibernian. Yeah, I'm sure Falkirk can catch Hibernian. You know, it's, it's going to depend when they play against each other and see who win. If he was a winner, I think he's, he's done. Yeah, what do you make of Falker? It's a great team, great, great team. Play good football, young team. But um, I think they need more experience in that team to to be able one day to challenge, the, to win the league. Yeah, yeah I mean, championship. it's a strange thing, but Ruffy, we've got three teams there that potentially could be in the mix mm -hmm. for this playoff and upset the Apple card. I think Falker are best place for it. Um, obviously, they've got a tough game tomorrow at St Mirren. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they certainly have, but uh, Falkirk seem to be another team who have a great belief in, uh, in challenging Rangers and Celtic. And they've been really good, but now they've put themselves in a position to possibly nick that second place, and we all know how important that is, you know, if you don't play as many games. But uh, I think they'll be looking at Hibs and thinking, well, they've in the two cups, you know, they went off the boil at the weekend. So they really think that uh, they've got a chance. Uh, and again, if we're talking about chances, if they get something tomorrow, it could all flip on its head tomorrow, Ruffy, because Hibs travel down to Queen mm -hmm. of the South. Yeah, we, we saw Rangers uh, having a difficult time down there as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's important that they bounce back. But in all fairness to Hibs, you know, when they went on a, a bad result, they've been managed to, to bounce back again. And I think the last time, that's when they went on that long run. So they'll, they'll really have to do something like that pretty sharpish. One unsavoury story uh, from the weekend, Ruffy, that, uh, again, is something that I think, at, at times, it's not a... a, a, a I would. I wouldn't like to be picked up on it by saying it's a major problem, but uh, Josh McGuinness um, was racially abused in the mm -hmm. game at Tynecastle by uh, one individual. Now, I've no doubt that Anne Budge and, and I think the uh, Hearts board will act swiftly if they can uh, nail the culprit on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they did it the last time. Uh, they came out very quickly, uh, and I'm sure they will this time as well, because there's, there's no way you want your club... To, to be associated with something like that. And it's not your club, it's an individual, you know. So the, the sooner that we start catching these individuals and punishing them, uh, the better. And I would like to think, obviously, with the CCTV and everything, that they'll be able to get the guy. You know, mm. that, that's what we've got to do. We've, everybody round about him has got to be seen that uh, you get punished for this kind of thing. Yeah, although knowing Josh, and he's been a guest on our programme, he is made of strong, stern stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think, uh, while it will, it will have disappointed him, I don't think it will um, deter him from playing football and you know getting back out there and battling away with Kelly against Ross County tomorrow night. No, I don't think it will, but uh, it must have affected him a wee bit for him to, to press for you know, to tell him after the game you know what had happened you know and it's an unfortunate thing obviously it never happened to me so I don't know what the experience of it is but you're certainly right it's not a, not a thing you want to see any player getting directed at him at all yeah have you ever been involved in that Christian where you've been racially abused in football well yes of course I think I have to say it but I try just to to forget because if I stay into it and I just think about it I get frustrated and maybe angry and maybe do some things and I shouldn't so I just try to forget and just be focused on my life. Yeah, how difficult is it, um, you know, if you're a player who's subjected to it, to actually get to a point where you think, OK, I'll forget about it and take it because I'm playing football and I, or 
should you make a stance? I mean, I, I think, you know, as Ruffy mentioned there, great credit to Josh McInnes mm -hmm. for actually reporting it. Well, we, we're all human beings. We, we can get affected by stuff, some by stuff and some by other. Um, as soon as he becomes racial abuse, I can understand his reaction. Um, it could be really, really difficult when you're not in your country and you go to someone else's country and you hear stuff like that. Well, I, it can be hard and uh, I just, I would have probably done the same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm delighted that Josh has decided it's not going to affect him. He's going to play uh, for Kelly and uh, hopefully the culprit will be caught. What about um, uh, some good news, Rafi? Robert Snodgrass, um, fit, available, <coughs> All set to be back in the Scotland squad. What a bonus for us. Oh, it's a fantastic bonus. You know, I, I thought he was the main man for us in that wide position at Scotland uh, till he got the, the bad injury. And uh, I think anybody that's been in the game, you know, and had a bad injury and been out that length of time uh, affects you mentally. You know, you've got to be really strong to fight it and come back and believe that you can come back the player you were. And uh, I'm sure he will. And if he can, uh, it'll be a tremendous asset to Gordon Strachan in the run-in for the World Cup. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed over the last couple of weeks the amount of players, apart from obviously Robert being back fit and available and we know the standard, have you been amazed by the amount of players who are now starting to shout they want a Scotland cap? I mean, Sam mm -hmm. Nicholson, the latest from Hearts, yeah. that would love to, to get maybe a sniff of the squad at Czech Republic and Denmark? Yeah, I've said it all along, you know, that uh, you, you don't really... You can't judge a, a player until he gets that chance to step up a level to international level. And I think we've got a lot of players, you know, that we want to see. And I, I'm sure Gordon will, in the two games we've got, use as many as possible. That, that, if you can get one or two that can just step up, uh, it be a right bonus for us. Yeah, and uh, another little snippet before we talk about some of the uh, uh, games uh, down south at the weekend, Ruffy. Andrew Robertson, um, some of the newspapers reporting that uh, he could be a target for some of the top sides in England. Manchester United, Arsenal, Tottenham, all be named with him. Absolutely amazing. You know, to come that far from where he's come from is absolutely superb. You know, and I think we, we all thought he was a really good player, but when he down to Hull, and they threw him in right away, he held his own against all the big sides. So they obviously see something in him, and he's so young, he, 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 two or three years down the line, he could be a terrific player. Yeah. Uh, how many years have you got in the legs, uh, Christian? You're only 31. Um, we were laughing there and joking with you about the clubs that you've played for um, and the ones that you've enjoyed. Um, how long do you think you can continue playing football? Because you've still got your fitness. Yeah. Well, people saw that I will end my career at 30. I'm 31 now, and I feel really good. So as long as I stay fit, I stay injury free, I can just, I would play. Yeah. Would you go home to France, or would you be happy to <coughs> try and extend your stay with Dumbarton, or indeed, <coughs> you know, depending on the twists and turns of football here in here in Scotland? Yeah, of course. You know, it's football. You never know. Uh, my my contract ends at the end of the season. Uh, depend how I, how I play. If I play well, I might attract cause out. Good team. If not, um, I will probably stop football. You're on the move. Yeah. <laughs> it's simple as that. I don't know if Dumbarton will offer me something else. I will just um, wait and see. Yeah. Are you enjoying your football at the moment? Yeah, of course, of course. And the fact that it's part time, I've got a lot of free time to look after me, my business. Um, and uh, yeah, I like it. And the, the, the strange thing about it, you know, a lot of footballers that we've had on the programme, Christian, start to look once they get to a certain point in their career and they think, I need to do something else as well. Um, you're obviously trying to get and nurture your fitness campaign and teaching others and taking them through a fitness programme. Yeah. Um, during all my career, I've been asked to be a fat player. And uh, something happened in my life and I started to change and I work really hard. Uh, I'm in really good condition right now, and uh, I just know that it's all about work, hard work, commitment. And I started to study uh, to be a personal trainer, uh, and just now I still take some people, and I try to train them to be try to be fit. And uh, some people come from France, I train them, and then I call clubs for them to 
to go on trial. Yeah. Now, don't worry about people mm -hmm. calling you a fat player, uh, Christian. <laughs> if you've got a good first touch, it's fine. Yeah. It you don't need to worry about it. If you oh, <laughs> honestly, if I was fat, I would probably worry, but I'm not even fat, so <laughs> it's up to them. I yeah. like it. Rough, roughy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't, right even, I wouldn't be affected by that. <laughs> not at all, but you could sign us two up. Yeah. And that'd be a start <laughs> so for you. Do you think you could do anything? No. no. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Of course. Of course I could. Oh, that's, of course I could. that's the best yeah. line of the day. Well done. Silence is absolutely golden there from Christian Nadi. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Christian, we're delighted you could come on the programme. We do hope you get an extended deal at Dumbarton. Um, absolutely magnificent. Um, thoroughly enjoyed uh, Christian Nadi uh, having a chat with us. Uh, do indeed uh, join us for more football chat when uh, Ruffy and I We'll be back tomorrow night on STV Glasgow, STV Edinburgh, and it all starts at 7 o'clock. From Christian Nadi, from Alan Ruff, and from myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. Good night.